Hello everyone, welcome to the second community tutorial for new users of ServiceNow's governance, risk and compliance applications. My name is Eric Ferron, I'm with ServiceNow based in Santa Clara, California. In the first episode of this series a few weeks back, uh, Shona Gillens and Donna Johnson, two of ServiceNow specialists, took us through the steps to follow to get ready quickly and efficiently for implementation. You will find a link to that first episode in the video description below and in the community forum. Today, Donna is back to share with us her advice and guidance to go through the actual implementation and to start realizing value from the software. Joining us from San Diego, hi Donna. Hi Eric, pleasure to be here. Similar to the first episode, the conversation today will cover only policy compliance and risk. Uh, audit and vendor management will be addressed in future tutorials. We will start with some refreshers from last time to make sure we are all on the same page, then go through a high-level view of the implementation methodology, and finally go in detail through each of the five phases of implementation. Last time, we started our conversation by a quick presentation of the various stages of maturity for governance, risk, and compliance. At the very beginning of the story, you would have been here in a very manual process world driven by spreadsheets and hoping to do to do your best. By moving over to ServiceNow, you would have gotten to the stage that we call basic, where your processes would have started to be automated and your uh, risk profile would have improved. And this is where we're going to be focusing today, is the implementation to get to that particular level that we also call the maturity level one. Now, in the future, there will be additional levels that we will be addressing, but these are not the focus of today's conversation. In addition, the big learning of our presentation was that to be successful, you needed to work with a partner or professional services. So this is something that really you should not forget and you should not try to to skip, it's absolutely essential that you select a partner or work with service now professional services. All right, let's move on to the actual implementation process. Uh, Donna, I'm gonna pass the ball to you. Thanks, Eric. So in our implementation process, we're going to start out in uh, these phases with initiate, we estimate. Traditionally, most use cases, one week, and then we move on to the prepare stage, which could take up to three to four weeks, depending on your use cases. And once we um, align on what our use cases are and we're prepared to initiate in the create phase, we're gonna execute on what we signed off on and that could be four to X number of weeks depending on how many use cases we're implementing. And then we'll have a sign off and a transition where we hand over the, the keys to the system and you start running with it. And that's like a two to four week process. And then a close out where we sign off on deliverables, one to two weeks. So overall, 12 weeks from beginning to end. Okay, in the initiate phase, it's good um, project management skills, if you will. We're gonna identify our delivery team. We're gonna have a workshop planning all the use cases and a formal kickoff with uh, sponsorship. So what's helpful here is when the customer documents our use cases and we do this either prior to the workshop or if we have to do it, then that's great too. We're gonna to look at your current process documentation, your diagrams, we'll outline all those processes aligned to policy, issue management, compliance, exception management, and risk management. So that will be our workshop logistics in the initiate phase. Then we're gonna prepare, we're gonna facilitate the workshop, we'll document your use stories, and we'll, we'll snap to a project schedule. Um, what's important here is that we provide the data internal policies, what control statements are you aligning to, you know, what regulations. If you already have a risk register and your risk scenarios, we're gonna pop those into risk statements. How do you test your assessments, any instructions you have for workflow, and any relationship to the data. And we'll validate these user stories and provide acceptance criteria. All right, when we start creating, we'll have uh, Agile Scrum, you know, our Kanban type of Agile Scrum cycles to realize your business objectives and the value. We'll be walking through this quickly. We'll load in your customer, customer data. We'll start moving through stories through the development process and starting to prepare to test it. So the customer should be prepared for this um, these activities with the unit testing, UAT, refining and updating user stories as we see fit to make sure that the solution brings value. And the customer should be ready to participate in the Scrum and review meetings. Then transition and close, uh, we'll keep a log of defects, 
uh, action items. What does the go live date look like? What are we going to do post go live date for support? And then closing out the engagement and deliverables. Um, the customer should be prepared for the user acceptance, testing, and review and sign off on defects and enhancements and any engagement feedback that we'd like to incorporate to make anything better. So what should I be doing right now? Um, definitely engage with your partner, your certified partner or professional service services team to schedule that demo. Make sure you know what your goals are, your end goals and your value you're going to get out of service now. And make sure you align with what executives are looking for um, from their point of view. And continue documenting your use cases. Okay, Luna, thank you. Thank you very much for this. And a reminder to our audience that for any questions, to download the slides, um, and to stay in touch to get updates, please make sure that you visit and you subscribe to the forum. The next tutorial will be focused on the next phase of implementation, which is, okay, you're live, and now what, uh, what do you have to do? All right, until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.